Do you have any idea why he asked us to meet him here? All he said to me was that he wanted his two top medical officers on the case, whatever the case may be. I haven't heard of any combat in the area or any ships coming in damage. I wonder what kind of medical emergency has come up. Do you think the Admiral's okay? What if he's come down sick? I don't know. I don't know a whole lot about El Orion physiology. As Deep Space Five's chief medical officer, I've made myself familiar with everything that's on record, but that isn't a lot. If he's come down with something out of the ordinary, we'll be working from a blank slate. Which would explain why he would want his top medics. What do you think the matter is? Has he mentioned any ailments to you lately? Not to me. Has he been off station recently to contract any alien diseases? Not that I know of, though he doesn't need to check in with me to leave. Heaven forbid they check in with us when they do, so that maybe we can safeguard them from potential contaminants. Has no one above the rank of commander ever heard of preventive medicine? I don't think it's limited to command. The transport and biofilters have made people careless. Well, whatever the problem is, we need to make a pact now. A pact? That if this leads to publication, we split the credit. I don't think... Admiral, what's wrong? What are your symptoms? My symptoms? We'll do a full medical workup. Whatever the problem is, we'll find a cure, Admiral. Are you positive about that, Doctor? Doctors? You have our word, Admiral. I'm glad to hear that. Let me introduce you to your patient. Introduce? The patient isn't you. No, Doctor, it isn't. It's my pet, Martini. Your pet? Yes. Its name is Martini, though I can't exactly say whether it's a he or a she. I got it a long time ago, but it seems to be a bit under the weather. Hasn't been eating right. Um, Admiral, I don't quite know how to approach this. Just come out with it, Doctor. It's a rock, sir. Not just any rock, Doc. It's my pet rock. You want us to examine your pet rock? Is this some kind of joke? Well, I think my colleague could show a bit more tact. I must echo his confusion. Take a close look at it, gentlemen. Do you see it? It's moving. Now that you mention it, I can. It's very slow, but it does seem to be inching forward. You're not bumping the table, are you? No. It's actually moving on its own. What are its symptoms? It seems to be a bit off its feed. It eats? Dust particles. I usually have to import dust to feed it. Now I know you're pulling our legs. You import dust? When needed. Right. I've never seen anything like it. What is it? That has been one of the key questions of my millennium, Doctor. I'll tell you what. I have its medical record here on this isolinear chip. You two start the examination while I tell you how Martini came into my life. Space, the final frontier. History, the tapestry on which those exploits are woven. These are the voyages of multiple generations of Starfleet officers who have sought out new life and new civilizations. As each generation boldly goes forth, those that follow build upon the legacy. Personal Log, Challenger Chief Communications Officer, November 14th, 2157, Earth Standard Calendar. I'm still trying to get used to the Earth's calendar, or any calendar for that matter. When you travel through the stars, encountering alien races, and live as long as I have already, it's strange to look at things simply in days and weeks. Listen to me, talking about how old I am. I have been around these humans for a while. Back home, 
I'd be looked at like the Earth equivalent of a teenager. As it is, though, I'm the oldest member of this crew by over a century. Sometimes, it's all just a matter of perspective. Anyway, there have been some rumblings among the crew about the current war with the Romulans. While some of them, specifically the Makos, wish that we were taking a more active role in the conflict, the majority of the crew is glad that Starfleet has kept the Challenger out of the fight, at least for the moment. I just hope that a peaceful resolution can be reached before either side takes us to a point of no return. It doesn't help that we have yet to see what a Romulan looks like. Avery, are you available? Computer, pause recording. Go ahead, Eugene. Could you come down to the science lab for a couple minutes? I'm running tests on the mineral samples we took from Tabalon 4, and I found something of interest. I'm not sure how much help I can be, Eugene, but sure. I'll be down there in a couple of minutes. Thanks, Avery. If my suspicions are correct, you may be of more help than you realize. If you say so. Avery out. Evening, Eugene. What's going on? I want you to come over here and tell me if you see anything unusual. This is something you needed me for, as opposed to one of your science staff. Just play along for a couple of minutes, okay? Okay. Where do you want me to look? Over on my table. Okay. I assume that you mean, besides the fact that you have that rock strapped to an EEG monitor, rather than broken up and put into test tubes. Yeah. Though that's the general area you should look. Isn't that strange enough? It gets weirder. Take a closer look. Weirder. Right. I'm not sure what I'm even supposed to be looking for. And who else is in here? What do you mean? It's just you and me in here. Eugene, you're not nearly as good at practical jokes as Rembrandt or Goldman. I'm not sure what you're up to, but I know that there's someone else in here. And they're probably the one that's moving that rock of yours. <laughs> I promise, Avery, this isn't a joke. What makes you so sure there's someone else in here? It would be easier to believe this wasn't a joke if you weren't giggling. <laughs> I'm excited. Just answer the question. You know that I'm a low-level empath. I can feel the low buzz of a third person. Person? A uh, creature. A life form. Why? What is it feeling? Okay, fine. I'll play along. It seems to be a bit confused and frightened. But not in pain? No. Can you convey to it that we won't hurt it? It? Wait a second. You aren't suggesting that I'm sensing feelings from this rock, are you? Yep. Right. Okay, who's helping you with this? Mary, is that you? No joke, Avery. I think we've discovered and are in the midst of a first contact with a whole new alien species. If this is for real... Oh god, Eugene, I'm sorry. I thought you were... I know. I spent the first three hours trying to figure out how Dr. Rembrandt was doing it myself. How did you discover this? I've been working with the mineral samples for the past two days. Each time I went back to get a fresh sample, I found this rock separated from the rest. The first time, I thought I just nudged it, and it rolled. But after the twelfth time I moved it back, I started getting paranoid. Thought for sure Max was trying to mess with me. Again. A reasonable conclusion. I thought so too. But even Dr. Rembrandt can lack the tenacity to play the same tune over and over. And as I sat here and studied the rock's movements for the next twelve hours... Twelve hours? That's all the time I had before my next duty shift. But I found it was moving under its own power. And remembering Cleve Baxter's theory of primary perceptions... I decided to test for possible biocommunication within the rock. That's why I hooked it up to the electroencephalogram, to see if I could detect postsynaptic potential. And I take it that you did. The readings are there on the screen. Definite brainwave activity. So you wanted me to come in and see if the brain activity was formed into conscious thought patterns. Exactly! You realize we need to take this to the captain. Of course. How many more of them do we have within the samples? As far as I can tell, none. None? How is that possible? I don't know. You didn't, you know, by accident? No, I'm certain. Okay, the captain will probably want to go back to Tevlon 4 to see if we can find any more of them. Of course. And we should have Max take a look at it as well. I was afraid someone would say that. Don't worry. This is something fantastic, Eugene. I know I doubted you, but you've established some strong proof here. Once he learns all the facts, he won't be able to make fun of you for it. I know, 
Uh, would you be willing to take it to him for me? I'll go debrief the captain, but I'd rather not have to explain it all to Dr. Rembrandt. Do you want me to go with you to the captain, too? No. He'll believe me. He knows I'm obsessive, but he also said I've proven myself to him. That's more than I can say for most of the crew. And that's still something we need to work on. I'll be in sickbay then, if you need me. Okay, let me get this straight. This thing is alive, it feels, it moves, and Eugene discovered it. Yep. Well, good for him. He deserves to have something nice happen to him. You know, Doc, it would go a long way toward helping him if you were to actually say something like that to him directly. Yeah, I know. Then why don't you? What fun would there be in that? If I were to actually show the boy affection, he's liable to become complacent. If I'm busting his chops, though, he's more likely to improve himself. You know, of course, that logic like that tends to backfire more often than it works. It's worked for me so far. Really? And how many patients has that worked on? You may be older than me, Avery, but remember, I've been practicing medicine longer than you've been practicing psychiatry. That still doesn't answer the question. Let's take a look at this pet rock of yours, shall we? I rest my case. Do you think they're going to cancel the Starfleet Christmas party this year? I haven't heard anything. Why do you ask? With the war going on, I don't know if they'll actually feel like celebrating. Have you ever been to one? Can't say that I have. If they hold it, you should go. Especially if the Enterprise is in the area and Archer is able to attend. Why is that? Have you ever heard the man sing? Can't say that I've had the pleasure. He's pretty good and has an impressive repertoire. I've heard him do everything from Elvis to Man from La Mancha. That's a wide variety. And he usually sings at the party? Sometimes. I remember this one time that... Let's like the sick bay. Sick bay here, boy. Is Avery still there? Of course he is. Where else would you expect him to be? <clears throat> that is, we're working on this creature you found. Nice job. I beg your pardon? Nothing. Nothing. Never mind. What did the captain have to say, Eugene? He said that he's looking forward to seeing the creature. But there's some bad news. Apparently, the front has relocated in the war with the Romulans. Heaven 4 is in the middle of a war zone. Well, given the circumstances, won't Starfleet give us an escort or send a ship already out there to investigate? Oh, they want to, but there's been a new development. Reports say that Romulans have started using atomics in combat. What? That's insane! I agree. The use of atomic energy in any form has been outlawed for over a century, let alone as a weapon of destruction. They haven't been used since they nearly leveled Earth during World War III. The Vulcans must be reveling in this. It just proves everything they were saying all those years to be true. Actually, I doubt it. Why's that? First, they haven't had much of anything to say about Earth politics since the destruction of the Earth Embassy. I think they're a little afraid that humans will point out how close they came to a civil war, or genocide. Is it fear and emotion? You know what I mean. What second? Whenever there's a first, there has to be a second. Second, I don't know what the history is, but during my time on Vulcan, any time the Romulan race was mentioned around the upper echelon, there was an added static in the air. A rise in suppressed emotion, if that makes any sense. A lot more sense than the use of atomic weapons. What are we going to do about this? There isn't much we can do. The captain is trying to peacefully protest returning to Earth to receive a shipment of atomic torpedoes. There's no way we're going to get back to the Tevalon sector anytime soon. So until then, this little guy is an orphan that we have to take care of. I think it would only be logical to put it in Avery's care, as he is the only one able to read the creature's emotions. Humans have had pets for centuries without being able to read their emotions. That isn't really the case. Normally, humans can tell what a pet is feeling by its facial responses and mannerisms. If a dog needs attention, it jumps up and down. If it's happy, and yep, so licks your face. This creature isn't able to do any of that. Therefore, having someone who can read those emotions is at a greater advantage. I guess I'll concede the point, but he's got to bring Martini into sick bay on a daily basis until we work out the details of what he needs to survive and thrive. Martini? Well, the creature needs a name besides the creature. I've been calling it Subject 1275. That's no name for a pet. 
And how did you come up with Martini? Martini. On the rocks. I don't get it. Ugh. We've got to get you out more often, boy.